Hi everyone, my name is Peter. Thanks for joining me at Our Worship Sound. In this video, I want to show you something I've been doing for many years, and that's building my own audio cables. And that might be something you've never thought of, but um, there's some different advantages to it, and let me tell you, it's much more doable than you might think. Uh, I'm not particularly handy, but I, it's something that I learned how to do, and I think you can do it as well. Some of the advantages are, number one, they're completely customizable to your needs. Um, say you want different kinds, kinds of connectors on your cables. Say you want uh, like an XLR on one end and a TRS on the other, or maybe you, maybe you want speak on on one end, or just whatever kind of connector you need on it, you can build it yourself. And the other thing is if, if you're gonna be using it for one specific purpose, you wanna go ahead and make sure it's not too short, but also that you don't have a ton of extra length going on just to get in the way. So you can build them any length that you want. So you can really make them custom to whatever you need. Secondly, you can control the quality that goes into your cables because when you buy cables off the rack, you don't know exactly what kind of components are going into them. They may be really cheap um, and you may be paying way too much for them, which leads to my third point is that you can get a lot better cable for less money or you can even just get a, a medium quality cable for less money so you're saving money either way i'm going to show you in this particular video how i'm going to make a, a cable with the same components and it's going to build the same kind of cable as one that i found online at just the regular retail price of, of 69.99 and i'm going to build it for under 25 us dollars so it's going to be made with mogami cable which is a uh, really good quality and neutric uh, gold plated connectors so you'll see that in in the demonstration part so I'm going to head to a different room in the house and we'll show you how this cable comes together. This is actually take two for this demonstration. Uh, I managed to make this wonderful Mogami microphone cable with gold tipped uh, nitrate connectors on it in the first take, but the videography was so poor and you couldn't see anything really that was going on. So hopefully this will be better. Uh, let me show you the things I have set up here. First of all, I have this soldering station. So it has the soldering iron um, along with a, a place to set the iron when you're not using it. It also has this uh, sponge underneath uh, which is good for cleaning off the tip uh, in between using it uh, and just keeps everything nice and clean. Then for the solder, I've never been particularly choosy about what kind of solder I use, but this is 6040 rosin core solder with a fairly thin diameter. It makes it easier to work with on these audio connections. You'll find that a good pair of wire strippers, especially spring-loaded ones, can save you a lot of time when building audio cables and a pair of needle nose pliers will also come in handy. Now to do this job you really need about three hands and so uh, in the absence of somebody else to, to lend you that third hand here's some things that I use. Um, this is a gator clip um, holder and this is a, a vise that I inherited with the house and I'll use those for different purposes as I'm building these cables. For the components themselves, uh, in the first video I had a uh, really premium Mogami cable. Um, it's only about 80 cents a foot actually if you pay for it that way. Um, this is a standard cable from Redco. And this is a standard Neutrik uh, male XLR connector. It's not the gold tipped one, but this is uh, really good quality still. And I've worked with these many, many times. So we have four different parts to it. And I'm gonna set these parts aside. The thing that you have to start out with is putting this, this cap on first because if you don't get this on first and you solder everything up, you're going to have to start the whole process over because this has to go on first. Uh, I've known this feeling several times when you get everything connected up and realize you forgot to put this part on and it's not a good feeling. So get that on first and then we can go to work. All right, so I'm gonna start by taking my wire strippers and, and prepping the cable for solder. So we have to pull the, uh, the outer jacket off. So I'm gonna crimp down just a little bit, not all the way through, because you don't wanna nick any of the wires. And then you're gonna remove that outer tubing. From there, we have different things going on here. We have a red connector, or a red conductor, a blue conductor, a lot of uh, copper wires, and then we have some kind of twine or yarn in there and we need to separate all this out. So as you bend everything to one side, the copper will stay down and you need to, to group that together and twist it. And that will serve as our ground conductor when we wire the connectors. Okay, and then the yarn is a filler that strengthens the cable. I'm gonna use my wire strippers to cut off that as well as I can. And then for our blue and red conductors, I'm gonna use the 
20 gauge part of my wire strippers and just cut off about a quarter inch of the the shielding or the tubing around the wires. Okay, so now that the wires are exposed, we need to do what's called um, tinning them. So I'm going to place this in the gator clip holder and then I'm going to get ready to do some soldering here. So when you solder, the idea is that you're going to heat up the wire and then apply the solder to the heated up wire. You're not going to try it. You're going to try not to touch the solder directly to the iron um, because that leaves a weaker connection. Um, a good tip in order to get the wire to heat it more quickly is to put some fresh solder on the iron and that improves the flow of energy to the wire. And then you can just melt the wire, melt the solder right into the wire. So heat up the wire and then touch the solder to the wire. Next we're going to take the male conductor end. I'm going to put it in the vise. Now this is a metal vise. You do not want to put a uh, clamp down on the metal part because that will um, conduct the heat away from the contact. So make sure if you clamp it like that, clamp it on the metal or clamp it on the plastic part rather. Okay. I'm going to melt some solder right in these XLR connectors. There is some smoke involved, but it's not a, a huge deal. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm just touching the bottom part of the, kind of the little cup there. And then that heats it up enough where the solder just melts into that connection. All right, now at this point, we uh, for, for XLR anyway, we have as much solder on the connections as we need. So all we need to do is heat up the connections and set the wires in place. Now, if you look on the front face of the connector, you'll see three different numbers, one, two, and three. And you need to make sure that you, you keep track of those and, and, and line it up with the other end. Okay. Now, as I said, our grounding conductor is going to go to pin one. Um, as far as red and blue, it doesn't make a, a whole lot of difference. But I'm going to put blue in the, the middle one, which I believe is three. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, I'm going to start by getting a little fresh solder on the iron. Then I'm just going to heat up that XLR conductor, slide in the cable, hold it in place, and then that connection is set. You have to wait till it cools before you move it. But as I said, we have all the solder that we need for this connection already in there. I'm going to get the red conductor situated, heat it up, it slips into the groove, wait for it to cool, and that's in place now too. Now this one seems to be setting in pretty well, but just sometimes one of these doesn't want to go right where you want it to go. So I'm going to show you what I do. I'm going to use the, the needle nose pliers, and you want to grab on the on the rubber part because again, if you if you grab the metal part, that'll conduct heat away from the wire. So. I'm going to heat up the connection and then use the needle nose pliers to guide it into place. I'm not doing very well under pressure here. Okay, now there's there's certainly something to be learned with experience on this technique. Um, but as far as the basics, that's all there is to it. To finish our connection, this little plastic protective sleeve goes over the wire, over the cable rather, and then to put the barrel on there are just two grooves that you have to line up with the inner part. Okay. Push that in a little bit and then screw the cap on. So there we have one finished end of a microphone cable. We would repeat the process on the other side, making sure that you line up the numbers, the one, twos, and threes. It's a, it's a different orientation on the other end, so you have to make sure you line that up. Um, but that's all there is to um, putting together a microphone cable with XLR connectors.
So that's the process for, for soldering a cable together. And you might have different types of connectors if, if you're talking about a guitar cable or a keyboard cable or a speaker cable or something like that. And so the connectors might work a little bit differently, but those are the basic principles and there's not really a whole lot to it. So for more information on what um, equipment I use, where I order the components from, you can follow the link in the upper right hand corner to take you to my blog post, Our Worship Sound, and that'll give you all that information plus a couple of extra tips. So I hope that was helpful. Go out and try your own audio cables and you'll be glad you did. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.